So what do we have today? Nikon issues yet another consumer apology. Let's focus on that. Hey everybody, welcome to After Chat. It is Monday, that means it is news day. Tom here with Ryan. Mm -hmm. And our first story on the docket is Nikon issues another apology. Uh, this time for people wanting their things too much. Yeah, this is actually kind of funny. It, it's just it's clickbaits to get you oh, uh, yeah. to get you in here. So the Nikon One V3, which is the version three of the Nikon One mirrorless camera, has apparently not been produced much, or is extremely um, in demand. Which I'm not sure. Nobody's really sure which is which at this point. But they ex issued an apology anyway, stating that the demand was much higher than they were expecting. Yeah, no, I, I actually think this is a good thing. No, so the, the Nikon 1 hasn't had a good track record. So the Nikon 1 V1 and V2, much like Canon's main mirrorless... Which you can't even buy in the U.S. anymore. Exactly. Um, they've both been very lukewarm and being outperformed greatly by every other mirrorless competitor. about. Yeah. The Nikon 1 V3 aims at a slightly different market, being a bit higher end and with more features and the speed. So the shooting speed is what they talk about quite a bit for this one. It was it six frames a second or more? Yeah. It was, it was no, it was like 12. It was very, it's it very was good frames very fast, yes. The kit's very interesting. I like the way that they packaged it with the grip and the viewfinder, which are both detachable. Yep. So Nikon 1 is a very small mirrorless camera. It comes with a bigger grip for, um, for holding a bigger lens potentially or having just a better grip in general and an electronic viewfinder that goes in the hot shoe which are both included in the big package that you can't buy separately in the U.S., but you can in Japan. Yeah. It was part of that. So, yeah, there's a big demand for the new Nikon mirrorless. So that's, that's good. It's actually a, an apology to say, we're sorry we underestimated you guys as consumers, which I, I accept as a much better apology than the, we're sorry we screwed up and we're going to release the D610 now. They apologize for the thing happening, <laughs> but they never admitted the 610 thing. Yeah. Which they should have. But... Anyway, it's nice to see the V3 potentially being a camera that people want to buy, ever, unlike any other mirrorless that they've made. So, Ryan, if you had a 17-ton telescope, what would you do with it? I'm going to strap it to an airplane. Well, then you would be guy who works at NASA. They build, they build big telescopes, and they always have had a problem with the uh, atmospheric distortion. When you build a giant telescope and you put it on the ground, that's great. You can make a telescope as big as you want but you have to deal with the atmosphere. So there's an engineer at NASA who decided that, well, why don't we put it in a 747? So they're NASA, why not? So they went out, they bought a 747, mm -hmm. and they mounted a giant telescope in it. There's a side door. So the, the 747 has a large, in the back, back third of the plane, a large, looks like a garage door that slides open, which reveals the short but very large Telescope. The the one they're starting in Chile is very interesting as well. Yeah. The thirty six meter very large telescope array. That's yeah. Vast. That one's still gonna have to deal with atmospheric uh, disturbance though. It does, but it's gigantic. But what they've done with this by mounting it in the seven forty seven, they can fly it up to almost fifty thousand feet, which gets them past where the atmosphere is causing the disturbance, so they can get very very sharp pictures without having to send it all the way up into space like the Hubble. Mm -hmm. The way that the very large, which I don't know, another few years out from opening, I think. It's actually, yeah. I forget the exact um, projected date. The way that it deals with the atmosphere is very cool, which you can never do with something that small. Each, each section of the mirror is three meters across, hexagon, and they use a bright orange laser, and they measure how the laser diverts to the atmosphere, and then they adjust each one of the panels to compensate for the laser. Oh, that, that's really cool, too. Um, and I guess this one has a new level of that, which is makes makes it one of the most impressive op optical telescopes ever made, so it should be very cool. We all know that I love my Canon rumors, and um, especially this one with the 7D where they put out the... Grassy knoll shit. The, the, the grassy knoll shit, yes. Um, where they, where the 7D where they have sent out the prototypes down to the World Cup to get photographs. Uh, there is an image floating around. This is still only a rumor, but since we're under a good impression that they're already down there, that... There's this one guy that's been caught every single day that he's been taking pictures, rain or shine, day or night, whatever he's doing, he's the only photographer who has his camera covered up. The guys at uh, Northlight Images 
point out that this guy probably is the one shooting with the 7D prototype, 7D Mark II prototype. It's possible. I mean, the rumor is that they're down there. He's the only one on the sidelines with it covered up. It could be. Or it could just be a guy who's really, really paranoid about the weather. Yeah. But it would be very funny if that was the case, actually. Uh, actually, that would just be great. Just the guy with the background of the camera, and you're all really stupid. I, don't you know. Know, I, I would love it. I would love it. That, that would make me laugh so hard if that's what all it is. Actually, it's making me laugh just thinking about it. So this is actually pretty... <laughs> I'm that already very, amused very by funny. this. <laughs> Why does anyone care that much? It's like... About a camera it's that... It's not like some mysterious technology that... I, that them keeping secret about it and saying that kind of stuff is such a marketing ploy. Oh, totally. It's just... It, it's totally a marketing ploy, but when you haven't released a new APS-C flagship body in mm. five years, you want to build up a little hype. <laughs> I don't want to build up a little hype. All right. It, the, all right. It, it could be nothing. Yeah. I like the idea that it's the 7D prototype out in the wild better. Because it'd be funny if it was a Sony prototype. But then oh, that'd that be up. hysterical because that'd be the only Sony being used at the, at the World Cup. Wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> and one guy's so ashamed that he's shooting with Sony that he's got the cover on it. <laughs> so we were talking about this earlier. The guys at LensRentals.com mutilating some lenses for some fun. Well, for some fun and for a client. But oh. These guys wrote, did a, a big write-up on something that no one in their right mind would ever do to their lens. The guys at LensRentals.com did a little uh, illegitimate, they, they, they described it as illegitimate repair work. Because they said the, the client who came to them could not find a legitimate repair site that would do the work they wanted done. What they did was they took a customer's Canon 100mm F2 and their Sigma 35mm Art, the brand new Art, and they took out all the electronic guts, fixed the aperture wide open, so 2.0 on the 100 millimeter and 1.4 on the 35, and then set it to focus at infinity and locked it. They locked the aperture open, they soldered the aperture arm so that it could not move, they glued the focus ring into place so it can't, can't turn, they put like Loctite red or blue, whichever one's the one that doesn't ever move without breaking, mm -hmm. they like locked the the, app, the focus rings in, so they are set to infinity forever. And the best part is they put all this up, <laughs> and then they put up the whole write-up of what they did, and they didn't tell anybody why they did it, except that they had a customer who asked for it. And watched the comments go wild. They trolled themselves. That's on very purpose. good. It's and, very and, good that they did that. And so, yeah, I was reading through the comments, and, and, and I'll, I'll put a link up to the to their article on their website because anywhere else that's been reposting it doesn't have all the great comments in it. People have been asking questions like, is this for the NSA? Is this going on a drone? Is this for astral photography? Is this for, like, and some of the, even some of the most crackpot conspiracy theorists can't figure out what the hell you would ever use these for. Probably is going on a drone. But why wouldn't you want to be able to focus on the drone? I mean, unless it's a weight issue. Well, no, the distance is always greater than the, the infinite focusing distance on either of those lenses. But You're never going to be that close to a little drone. And so you figure at night, you're going to need ma maximum aperture anyway. If you like looking at things that just should never happen, these guys really documented the hell out of what they did. Lots of great pictures. It's funny. It's really, and, and they're entertaining as they go through it, too. It's, it's actually a very entertaining, hysterical write-up. So Sony's trolling people, too. They released the first image taken with their curved sensor. I wouldn't say that's trolling. The image that they sent out is really funny, though. It is hysterical. That's what I mean, that they're trolling with the... <laughs> so the image that they sent out is an image of a little miniature diorama, which doesn't actually really show Anything. any effect of it. It's just a, a miniature that they took a, just a very plain picture of, which yeah. is funny. I, that, that's, that, I find that it very funny. funny. That's what they did. And of course, they did this on the 4th of July, because that's not a holiday in Japan. So Sony was just working. Yeah. So yeah, like you said, it doesn't give us anything to go by except for the fact that they claim they took the picture with that sensor. They're trolling us. Yeah. But we love it. We want to. We want to keep up on it. Um, one thing they they do mention though is that it's not a very high def picture yet. So it's like a prototype sensor. It's the prototype sensor. They mounted it into something. It's a smaller sensor. It's not even like their mic. It's not even like a micro four thirds. It's actually an even smaller sensor right now. Hmm. And they said it. The only you, they don't tell you what the what the resolution is on it, 
where they say it does not have 18 million pixels. Which means it's not an 18 megapixel yeah. sensor. <laughs> uh, the best guess anyone's got, because it's a JPEG and it's been resized, obviously, is that it's probably something in like an 8 to 10. Yeah. Which is still it's, pretty decent. It's very strange. But strange how they choose to do that. It's all about trolling today. Yep. All right. Well, that's a bunch of news. So that's all our news for this week, which means we have a very, very short news episode again. That's probably going to be the case for a while. It's not very, very short. Okay. It's just shorter than I'd like it to be. What did you want it to be? I'd like 12 minutes. Of, so I found I have a pen. I have a pen. I could throw a beer bottle. No, I forgot my pen on Thursday. You weren't here. I forgot my pen on Thursday. So I couldn't close it. The art, the, that episode is still going because I couldn't end it because I had nothing to throw at the camera. You don't believe me, do you? Uh, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>